Ladies and gentlemen, we are officially back. It is mock draft season. We have our first 2019 NFL mock draft of the year. I'm going to do my best to make this weekly with some team-specific mocks, uh, seven-round mocks mixed in. I don't know how realistic that is, but my ability to get through this in one shot with the new layout and controls is going to tell me a lot about my ability to do this. So with me being completely out of time, Let's run through this. I will put all the links to everything else as far as support and Facebook group and all that stuff. It'll be in the description. So just hit the little arrow, read all the stuff, see if there's anything that interests you. I would especially encourage you to get in the Facebook group because we do um, mock drafts and other things of that nature in there. So that would be a good idea. But let's get started right out of the gate. going to feel so good to say this. With the first overall pick and the 2019 NFL Draft, the New York Jets select Nick Bosa, edge rusher, Ohio State. So I don't think this could have been much easier as a pick. Um, it's more or less who's the first team and do they have two really good edge rushers? If not, they get Nick Bosa. So this is pretty straightforward. The guy is just an absolute dominant force. And by the way, I didn't set, <coughs> excuse me, I didn't um, set the draft order. This is on uh, I use Tankathon. Whatever they say is what I do. This is also dated, so I'm going to have the Bears on here. They're not supposed to be on here, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. I'll update it as we go along. Um, but it is what it is. So the Jets, according to them, at this time were number one overall. Um, but the Jets, I think, are in rebuild mode, uh, which actually technically would probably be build mode because I don't think they've ever been a good football team in my lifetime. Uh, they landed their quarterback of the future. Now they have the chance to get their edge rusher to pair with that. And this doesn't really necessarily make them a good football team. But depending on how good Sam Darnold could be, uh, if they get this uh, elite piece mixed in, then they're well on their way. You know, a couple extra pieces here and there, a couple hits in this draft alone, uh, could, could they could surprise some people in the relative near future. Uh, next up, <laughs> these transitions are going to be hard. I'm trying to do two different jobs at once. With the second pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Cleveland Browns select Ed Oliver, defensive line, Houston. is another one that's sort of a no-brainer for me. It's not necessarily 100% certain. Um, Ed Oliver, I would think, would be the number two. Entirely possible he ends up being number one. It's also I've seen him and other mocks get down outside of the top five, which I think is absolutely silly. If you watch... I'll, I'll actually, I'm going to try to remember to put it in the Facebook group, but there's already highlights of his week one uh, campaign against some nobody team. I think it was Rice or something, so it's a little slanted. But just watch this guy play in week one. Again, I'll put that video up. But man, oh man, this guy is an absolute monster. But anyways, the Browns have got their quarterback now. They've got their pass rusher, Miles Garrett. They actually have several pieces that I kind of like. Um, Oliver is drawing comparisons to Aaron Donald. Every year you're going to hear about a guy that's like Aaron Donald. It's kind of like hearing you know, every year that there's this or that quarterback, this is the, this is the Aaron Rodgers and this is the Andrew Luck or whatever. But, you know, in all seriousness, although there's only one Aaron Donald, Ed Oliver would be one person where it's like, mm, yeah, maybe, maybe he's really good. Um, I, 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 as far as the Browns are concerned, my, my biggest concern here is not necessarily that this is a bad pick because this is a great pick, and they might make several great picks. My biggest concern for them, this isn't even necessarily draft-related, but it's probably your head coach. And I don't know what Cleveland Browns fans think about your head coach, if you guys like it or not, but I can tell you outside of that region, the people that are, you know, other fans of other teams are watching Hard Knocks, and we just feel very bad for you, and I'm very sorry what you're going through. I'm very sorry that that is your head coach because that looks like a nightmare over there. <coughs> there is an incredible amount of talent. And I'm just going to throw this out there before we move on to our next pick. But in all seriousness, um, I think Lincoln Riley might be a decent addition to your team. He's he's a very good college coach. He's probably, if you're to pick one college coach, that's going to make that, I don't even know if you'd call it a leap because I know some guys prefer college, but that move into the NFL, Lincoln Riley would probably be one that NFL teams are going to call up. And if you think about it, who was Baker Mayfield's coach again? Oh, yeah, it was Lincoln Riley. So just throwing that out there so I can get ahead of it so when they hire Lincoln Riley, you can say you heard it here first. Or maybe Browns fans have been talking about that for months already. I don't know. But it's new to me. With the third pick, and I don't have any fancy graphics for this, but it technically was the Bengals. I had the Bears, who don't have a pick anymore, trading up 
with the Bengals for the third overall pick. Uh, the Bears traded away their 2020 second and a 2019 third because they don't have a 2018 second. Um, so, you know, again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I think it kind of goes to the, the fact that this is why I kind of said the Bears are a good match for Khalil Mack for this exact reason. I think they are an edge rusher away, technically they're Trubisky away, depending on how good he is, but that is what it is. He's your quarterback for good or for bad. But in terms of what you can do, the one piece you are officially missing, it's an edge rusher. Vic Fangio has turned your defense into a top 10 defense already. These guys are continuing to ex- you know, excel. You've got Kyle Fuller locked up for a long time. You've got a lot of stuff going your way, but you don't really have an edge rusher that's any good. I had you guys trading up for, I'm completely forgetting to go in order. The Bears select Cleland Farrell. Okay, anyways, that's who I would have had you pick. You got Khalil Mack. He's obviously much better than Cleland Farrell will ever be. However, you know, draft capital and all that stuff. Bottom line, though, this was the biggest need. The need got filled. As a Packer fan, I am not happy about any of this. Um, but, um, you know, again, it all is going to come down to Mitch Trubisky. He is going to be the the cap. It doesn't matter. You could have the number one defense in the NFL, which probably not, but maybe. And uh, if Trubisky is as bad as he was last year, you guys aren't going anywhere. So just <laughs> that's my uh, unbiased analysis, just so you know. That was not me being being bitter in any way or shape or form. With the fourth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Indianapolis Colts select Jonah Williams, offensive tackle, Alabama. So this was a little bit of a jump in terms of my big board. And I'm, I think early on, I'm going to allow myself more freedom to jump because anything's possible. And as I get further and further, as we get closer to the draft, I'm going to try to be a little more strict. But at this point, if I make a leap 10, 15, 20 guys down the line, does it really matter? Um, probably not. But um, in my opinion, and I know you guys have done a lot of work over there in Indianapolis to protect your quarterback, Quentin Nelson, fantastic draft pick last year. I know, especially offensive line isn't a lot of fun, and you, going back-to-back offensive line is probably not going to make a lot of Colts fans happy. But I just I feel like you guys need one more piece, and I feel like with Jonah Williams on board, with Quentin Nelson, with all the other stuff that you have going on there, depending on how guys like Ryan Kelly and Matt Slauson, how they end up progressing in 2019 this could be the final piece and then from here on we can just continue to uh you know build out um primarily you need to focus on defense but it's also a very very deep wide receiver class so as much as i would say let's just get our tackle and do nothing but defense i would be stunned if the colts don't end up getting a wide receiver or two out of this class because it's just it's ridiculously stacked and you're about to see how ridiculous very shortly. But um, yeah, e- either way, I think this is the most important thing, especially tackle. you got to have guys coming off the edge. And, and Andrew Luck is sort of the make or break for this team. Um, a lot of people are already kind of counting out the Colts just because, you know, they don't think he's ever going to get back to form. We'll see. But if, if he can play the way he was, making sure he's healthy for the remainder of his career is going to be the number one, um, number one most important thing. So that's why I went with what I went with. With a fifth overall pick, In the 2019 NFL Draft, the New York Giants select DeAndre Baker, cornerback, Georgia. So I know Greedy Williams is supposed to be the top guy, whatever. My big board is what it is, and uh, if I'm looking for a cornerback, I'm going to take the top available, and I have currently DeAndre Baker as my top corner. Now, just for those that don't know, my big board is not my own. It's not my own scouting. It is an aggregation. I go out and find all these different places where they have certain things. I update that as regularly as I can, and I make one big, big board, and I'll eventually put that up on a website, and you can see all that stuff. Um, I don't have any of that available quite yet, but I do have about getting close to probably 800 prospects right now that are all graded out. So um, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool list. And um, the more, the further on down we get, the more that these sites start putting out their top 10s, top 20s, which doesn't seem like much, but you figure different players are in people's different top 10s, top 20s. It ends up making a pretty pretty big list that's pretty uh, thorough over the, the course. Of, you know, your top 100 has several websites with different grades on them. Anyways... I think that the Giants are a better team on paper than what they put forth in 2017. I don't think that's a, uh, or a yeah, 2017 was last year, 28. It's confusing. 2017 was last year, 2018 is this year. We're talking 2019. It's going to be hard to keep that straight. 
I don't think that's super controversial to say. So with that said, I don't know what the Giants are. On one hand, I look at the talent that you guys have, and it's like, this is going to be a really good football team. And then I remember what you did last year, and it's like, I, you guys are horrible. So again, I didn't pick the draft. If it was up to me to pick the draft order, Giants would have been later. I don't think you guys are picking at five, but it is what it is. Um, the one area, though, that I do think you guys need some help is going to be at cornerback. I know Hairston, Moore, Wilson, they're all very young. Um but I think it's way too important. It's, it's, it's I'm getting way too into theory here. But I, I think cornerback is quickly becoming more important than edge rusher. Kind of a weird theory, but I'm just throwing it out there. Um, but it, it's way too important of a position to just say, let's just wait and see what happens with these young guys. Now, obviously, we'll have all of 2018 to continue to gauge that. If these guys can step up, okay, fine, maybe we'll, we'll hold off a little bit. But if not, we've, we've got to get some better corners on this football team. Quarterback, obviously, is another option but I feel like it was a little too early. Um, Baker isn't super tall or fast. He's a solid football player, and um, that's about it. That's all I got on the guy. I, I honestly don't know why he's this high up when I was looking at his stats and his, his even his, <laughs> I was watching some of his highlights because I didn't understand it. I don't know, but it's not my big board, so we'll see what happens. With the sixth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select... DK Metcalf, wide receiver, Ole Miss. So I know you guys know all about one of these Ole Miss wide receivers by the name of Mr. A.J. Brown. But DK Metcalf could be um, going a little earlier than him. And to be completely honest, if you didn't know, I've already said this is a stack wide receiver class. There are three Ole Miss wide receivers. All of them have first-round potential. Um, A.J. Brown, again, is the one that everybody knows about, but uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, maybe none of them will be first-round picks by the end of this whole thing, but I do have D.K. Metcalf one spot above A.J. Brown, so I'm going to have them going to the Cardinals, and it's it's for more reasons than just he was higher up on the board. I think that this actually makes sense. If you think about it, Fitzgerald, I'm assuming, is in his last year, but I've been assuming that for several years now. Um, but once Fitzgerald leaves, I have to assume Christian Kirk is going to slide to the inside. And what do you have at that point? You have essentially a downgrade because Christian Kirk is not going to be what Fitzgerald was. You're going to need somebody on the outside. DK Metcalf can be the guy on the outside, six foot three, 220 pounds. The guy's got deep speed for days. I don't know what else he has. I watched just very little bit of his highlights. He telegraphs what he, I mean, I could tell you exactly what he's going to do. Everybody can just by what he does coming out of his stance, right? If he starts going doing all this really crazy nonsense that doesn't really do anything, he's going down the field because he just gets super crazy feet. If it's if he's either blocking or running a short route, he just kind of slowly glances out of his stance. Just this, It's like, dude, you got to mix it up a little bit because I can tell you within a split second exactly what you're doing. But when he goes deep, though, this guy is burning everybody. He's got that, that long stride. It's pretty scary, so... He needs to he needs to clean that up a little bit, but I really like him, and it's it's I think it's a good fit for the Cardinals, who could use another weapon at wide receiver. <coughs> of course, I have a cough today. That just has to happen. Next up, with the seventh overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Cincinnati Bengals select. And by the way, they traded back. If you didn't remember. A.J. Brown, wide receiver, Ole Miss. So yes, back-to-back -back wide receivers. Yes, back-to-back -back Ole Miss wide receivers. And yes, I'm pairing A.J. Brown with A.J. Green. And I promise you, I didn't do it for any of those reasons. Um, I just think the pick makes a lot of sense. I actually think this is something the Bengals should have done a long time ago. Getting a top-tier wide receiver. This guy is going to be a slot receiver, by the way, for those that don't know. To pair him with A.J. Green. It's just too much is being put on A.J. Green. I, I just, you know... You guys should have gotten a new quarterback a long time ago. You should have added some help. I know, I know you have a new running back now. Hopefully he can step up and become something. I don't really know if he will. Um, but it's just unfortunate that you're starting to kind of see these things, and it's like, ooh, now we got A.J. Brown. Obviously this is theoretical, but we got that. We've got our running back. We've got some exciting stuff going on. But this is at the point where A.J. Green's career is slowly starting to taper. He's still a good wide receiver, but it's just kind of like, mm. I'm thinking it's a little too, little too late. But at the same time, we got to do something. Um, and I feel like this would be a pretty good move in terms of making our team competitive going forward. Moving on with the eighth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins, who will be drafting much earlier than eight, uh, select Greedy Williams, cornerback LSU. This is probably the one you're aware of. Uh, most people know when you think quarterback 2019 draft, you're thinking Greedy Williams. Um, 
the question for me with Miami was, do we reach on a quarterback or do we take best available? I think Miami is a garbage heap of a football team, and I'm very sorry to my Miami Dolphins watchers right now, but you guys have to know, right? I mean, you know. It's really, really bad. If you put a quarterback in that mess, what are you accomplishing? Absolutely nothing. I mean, if you've got a quarterback that you think is going to be great and he's sitting right there, fine. Go ahead and pull the trigger. You might as well. you got to get your guy eventually. But you're just setting him up for what? He has nobody to throw to. There's there's no real solid running backs. There's no good defense. There's no, there's no good anything on this team. What what are you, you're, you're setting him up for failure is all you're doing. So... I went with best player available. You match Greedy Williams with Minka Fitzpatrick, who you added in the first round last year. You've got, I don't know, I don't want to say a good defensive back group, but you've got the makings of something kind of good here, right? Minka Fitzpatrick, I think, is going to spend a lot of time in the slot. So at the very least, corner, which, as I've said, is is an increasingly uh, important position, is getting more solidified, and you're starting to build, right? Eventually, you got to get your edge rusher. you got to build up on a couple of these other important pieces, and then ideally, you slide a quarterback into a pretty solid situation here where you've got some, some decent pieces as it is, and you can move forward as a football team. Not Don't just grab a quarterback and throw him into your garbage heap of a team and be like, oh, maybe he can fix everything for us. He won't. He never does. When has that ever worked? Ever. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Moving on. With the ninth overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Buffalo Bills select... Josh Allen, linebacker, Kentucky. Yes, yes. What just happened to my screen here? <laughs> That's all jacked up. Anyways. Um, no, obviously this is a different Josh Allen. Yes, I put two Josh Allens on the same team. and No, that's not why I did it. Um, I wish I could have avoided it, but it just made the most sense. Um, I went with inside linebacker, which was their pick last year. So I could, you know, again, I could see Bills fans going, oh, come on. We're not going back-to-back linebacker, but yes, we are. Allen, um, he's going to be the Sam linebacker. He's going to be uh, taking the place of Lorenzo Alexander. He's going to be next to Tremaine Edmonds. Listen, Bottom line is the run defense and the, the overall interior of this team, I think, is one of the bigger weaknesses. So whether it's defensive line or inside linebacker, it's the area that I want to fix. And I understand you got Tremaine Edmonds. I just don't think he's going to be the cure-all. Got to get better at, along the middle of that defense. I know passing is the biggest thing. That's the most important thing. But you guys can't stop the run for nothing, for anything. For You can't stop the run. That's the problem. Not as important as the pass, but you guys are just horrible at it. So anyways... Josh Allen is going to be the guy. And if Josh Allen, the quarterback, turns out to be a good quarterback, the Bills could surprise some people with, you know, I mean, there, there's there's pieces here. There's enough pieces. Running back, wide receivers, good quarterback, solid offensive pieces or <coughs> defensive pieces. Not going to win the Super Bowl, but everybody kind of thinks that you're the worst team in the NFL. So, I mean, surprise people could be like almost make the playoffs. Probably get a round of applause for that one. Moving on. Hey, it's fixed. i got to work on that. Uh, with the 10th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Ryan Finley, quarterback, NC State. So I'm assuming this is going to be very controversial. I actually went to Florida a couple of years ago and uh, stayed with my wife's relatives. And um, one of the guys there, big, 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 big Buccaneers fan, big, 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 big Florida State fan. I had mentioned casually not a huge fan of your quarterback. <laughs> you would have thought that, uh, well, let, let's just say that the man is more or less deified um, in some circles. So could very well be controversial. I understand that. But first of all, Jameis Winston is far from elite. Absolutely. There's no question about that. I'm very sorry. I know a lot of Bucks fans. I've gotten into arguments who are saying he's going to be the number one quarterback in the NFL. Just, again, Buccaneers fans are a little crazy with this Jameis Winston guy. That said, though, or with that said, in addition, if I'm the GM of this team, if I'm a coach of this team, I'm embarrassed by Jameis Winston. I'm embarrassed that we ever picked Jameis Winston. His actions are so ridiculously juvenile and dumb and dangerous. It's not just silly stuff. I mean, this guy is, he just doesn't have it up here. I'm sorry. There's something wrong with him. He's a thief. The things that he that comes out of his mouth are disgusting. The, the the way he treats people, assaulting women, right? These are not okay things. This none of this is okay. 
the guy needs to go. Now, I understand absolutely if Ryan Finley comes in and is an embarrassment, this is going to be something that could ruin my career, right? If, if Ryan Finley is a terrible quarterback and I gave up Jameis Winston, who is a capable quarterback, he's not elite, but he's capable. He's in sort of upper mid-tier-ish kind of guy. Um, but I, I, I don't care. We, we got to move on because this is not going to happen. I'm not going to have Jameis Winston on my team. I'm sorry. It's just not going to happen. I can put up with a lot of stuff. That guy is a moron. He just is. And I'm sorry if you like him. I'm sorry if he's your quarterback, but the guy's just a piece of garbage. Anyways, moving on. With the 11th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Washington Redskins select Kelvin Harmon, wide receiver, NC State. So as I've said, a lot of wide receivers. I'm trying not to go crazy with wide receiver because I know that's not super popular in the first round. And yes, I see the red stripe next to him. It was a picture that I could find, whatever. I don't care. Um... But I think I have six wide receivers in my top 32 right now, so not going too crazy with wide receiver is almost an impossible task. Um, so anyways, I don't really know how to gauge Redskins fans, and I, I haven't I don't, haven't really talked to any ever, but um, I don't know what your guys' perception of your wide receivers is, but from my outside perspective, I'm not scared of them at all. I, I did read some articles, uh, went to some Washington Redskins sites, and one of the thing was how so-and-so wide receiver is going to break out and this guy's going to be great. And I understand most things are going to be that way. Most fans think that this person's going to break out or whatever. But in all seriousness, rational Redskins fans, what do you think of your wide receivers? Because I just, I'm looking at it going, you guys got to get somebody over here that's that's somewhat decent. Now, I'll admit there's potential. Um, some of these guys have potential, but I'm, I'm not a huge Josh Doxson fan. I don't think he's going to really amount to anything. So if nothing else, Harmon comes in, um, He's going to replace Josh Dox. And I, I also understand that's a huge, a very large pill to try to swallow because Josh Doxson was just a first-round pick like three years ago. But whatever, we just, we just have to get better there. And this is the top guy on my board. We're going Kelvin Harmon, wide receiver, NC State. Just is what it is. But it, as I've said also, I do want to hear from the fans because I'm trying to gauge your team. I'm trying to gauge college football. I'm trying to gauge a lot of different things that I am just have a cursory knowledge of, and I'm doing my best to try to gauge things. But if you're a fan of the Redskins, the Bills, the Giants, the even the Packers, I don't care, put your input in because I learned a lot over the last year, and that's what this is. That's the reason I can do mock drafts every week and not just repeat myself over and over is because every week we learn more. Teams change every week. College football teams and their players change every week. And my understanding of teams, based on what NFL teams are doing, but also what NFL fans are telling me, um, gives me a better perspective. The idea being, when we get to the draft, we got this thing. We've, we've covered pretty much all the angles. And I know and you know pretty much everything that there is to know. Moving on. Where are we at? With the 12th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Tennessee Titans select Austin Bryant, edge rusher, Clemson. So, yes, we took Landry last year. We're going back-to-back. -back. Um, Landry was a good uh, replacement for, you know, the aging Brian Arakpo. I understand all that. My concern, however, is um, the fact that Derek Morgan's contract is also expiring. And um, I'm looking at Austin Bryant, who's sort of the big-bodied edge rusher, and I feel like he would be a pretty good replacement for um, Derek Morgan down the line. You know, we actually he'd probably be gone by this point because 2019. Anyways, that's why I, I went with Austin Bryant, and I need to start picking this up. So, Titans select Austin Bryant with the 13th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft. The Denver Broncos select Drew Lock, quarterback, Missouri. Another situation I don't know how to gauge, but I'm going to give my own insights on this. I don't think Case Keenum is the future of your team, and I don't think you believe that Case Keenum is the future of your team, and I hope you don't want him to be the future of your team. I know he had a great year last year. I get that. That's awesome. But he was also signed to a two-year deal for less than $20 million a year. You consider what Case Keenum put together, then look at what Jimmy Garoppolo did in his body of work and compare the contracts, right? Case Keenum did a lot more than Jimmy Garoppolo did. He took that team a lot farther than Jimmy Garoppolo ever did. Just saying, I don't think the Broncos see this as their, their guy. Um, 
The Broncos also, though, decided not to go quarterback last year, which seems like it might be a mistake. But the, the benefit of that is a lot of these teams that are kind of drafting early on, they kind of punched themselves out last year and went quarterback, 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 quarterback. So the Broncos now get one of the better quarterbacks to fall to them at 13, and they get to pick the whichever guy that they want. In this case, I went with Drew Locke. Locke is 6'3", 225 pounds. Not the biggest in the world, but I have to assume he is going to fit that uh, John Elway threshold. With the 14th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Brian Burns, edge rusher, Florida State. <clears throat> so I would think if any fan base can appreciate um, the pass rush duo and how beneficial that is, it's the team that got to watch Holly and Houston tear up the league for quite a while. So I'm not expecting a ton of pushback on this. We've got Houston locked up a few more years. Um so Burns is going to be sort of that compliment. Now, the interesting thing here is he's not a Tom Bahali replacement, right? Tom Bahali was a much bigger guy. Brian Burns is a much smaller guy. He is a 3-4 outside linebacker, so it's a good fit in that regard. But, you know, he's not a Holly replacement. However, he is a, a D Ford replacement. So it's kind of a question of do we want to go back to Holly and try to get that kind of a guy? I mean, obviously, Holly's Holly, not because of how big he is, but he's because he's a freak football player, and that's more or less what matters but it's just sort of a are we looking for that mold or are we looking for more of a d ford thing and i think in general well two things one it's either d ford or we go a different position or excuse me brian burns or we go a different position because there's not just whatever edge rusher i want sitting here but secondly if we are looking for a prototype to put at this position I would assume that we're going in a certain direction. So D Ford is what they were kind of looking for. He hasn't really panned out. We're going to try again. We're going to go with Brian Burns. So anyways, there we go. Moving on. With the 15th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Noah Fant, tight end, Iowa. So the guy is an absolute athletic freak. So if you don't really know, that's kind of his whole MO, right? And that's kind of the 2018, 2019. That's where the NFL is going with tight ends, the whole blocking kind of stuff nobody really cares anymore we're just looking for another wide receiver to put in line I guess is what we're looking for so um 49ers aren't exactly set at every position but I think they've made some pretty serious strides they got McKinnon who's now out for the year but still he's your running back I think he's going to be really solid you got Garoppolo at quarterback you have Foster at linebacker who looks like an absolute freak you've got Buckner along the defensive line you got Mike McGlinchey now at the offensive tackle you've got the number one offensive tackle on the other side you got Pierre Garçon at wide receiver Sherman at corner right you've got a lot of pieces the question that i'm asking though and not only that but it's a good matchup but the question i want to ask is if we say okay we've got enough we're never going to build a perfect roster but we have enough pieces the question is what's going to put us over the edge and i think noah fant a a solid number one tight end is that kind of thing that can push you over the edge to where now we're looking for a mismatch type of guy you know you can call it a luxury pick but really the the benefit that this brings to be able to scheme against defenses is incredible and if Noah Fant can even be half of what he's being hyped up to at this point he's going to be one of the top tight ends now 75 percent chance he's a bust because tight ends just never seem to pan out for some weird reason still this guy can be an absolute freak for this team and it's one of those moves that seems like again a luxury pick but when you hear the 49ers make it and we still have to find out what kind of a team they are but let's just assume they end up being a very good football team um this is one of those picks that, especially if you're in the division, it's like, oh, no, <laughs> no, why did this have to happen? So I'm happy with it. Let me know what you think in the comment section. With the 16th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens select Rashawn Gary, edge rusher, although he's defensive lineman, Michigan. I don't know why everyone calls him an edge rusher. He plays along the defensive line. But what he is, essentially, he is that interior defender that in your base is going to be a you know, 3-4 defensive end, we'll call it, depending on your team, which in this case is a 3-4 team. And then when you go into your nickel and you kind of have that 4-3 alignment, he can play defensive end. So that's kind of his thing. He's a versatile, disrupt, kind of get-up-the-field kind of player. Um, Gary has uh, potentially gives them one of the top defensive lines. I know that doesn't really mean much anymore in the NFL. There's so many stacked defensive lines, it's hard to compete but it gives them a very, very good defensive line with uh, Pearson Williams uh, also in that group. 
I would like to add an edge rusher um, with Suggs likely gone after this year. <coughs> I would assume. I don't really know. There's really not a whole lot of talent that I could find along the edge. But I don't really have a good good option here. And Rashawn Gary was, I mean, he has fallen. He has fallen pretty far. So this is a great value. And to be honest, he's more or less a pass rusher. That's why you draft him. His value is in his ability to get after the quarterback. So that is why I went with that pick. With the 17th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Oakland Raiders select Rodney Anderson running back Oklahoma. Now, a couple things. First of all, obviously I didn't know you guys had two first-round picks at this time. I also didn't know you were about to lose Khalil Mack, so probably running back isn't your biggest thing at this particular point in time. But my thought process at the time was, okay, you got you got your wide receivers, you've got a decent uh, tight end, you've got your quarterback, We'll work on the defense all throughout the draft, but we're going to lose Marshawn Lynch. We don't really have any running backs that any of us are really excited about. We should probably grab a guy, and he's a good value right here. Getting a top running back like Rodney Anderson is projected to be is beneficial. We've seen how much these guys can help teams, and I'm also trying to think about the Raiders and John Gruden. I don't know how much the rumors are true about him being kind of like a 90s type coach, and he's still trying to go old school, but... I'm thinking he's the kind of guy that really likes a Marshawn Lynch, and when Marshawn Lynch leaves, he's looking for another guy. So, oh, shoot, I completely forgot. This was the Seahawks spot. <laughs> Dang it. I almost got through this all without messing something up. The uh, The Seahawks had this spot. They traded back. The Raiders gave up a third-round pick to move up. Anyways, they traded up to get him, which makes this seem even more, <laughs> even more ridiculous. I should have just left it alone. You don't know what the order is. But, um... Rodney Anderson is a, a big body guy who's going to be able to take that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know. Again, we'll see. But according to what I've heard out of Gruden, he wants to just run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. And you're going to need a guy like Rodney Anderson to be able to do that. So for that reason, uh, the pick kind of makes sense. You know, again, Lynch, uh, not super great. Doug Martin, you guys picked up. But I mean, come on. He had like one good year. The guy's injured all the time. There's just no way. So this is sort of the swing for the fences, guys. It's probably the last time I'm ever going to do this, though, because of the, you know, you guys need so much help along the defense, the defense in general, everywhere along the defense that uh, this probably won't happen. But, hey, we've got a lot of mock drafts coming out this year, so this will be the one where you get a running back. Moving along. With the 18th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Levante Taylor, cornerback, Florida State. So... This is nothing against Slay. Slay is a good cornerback, but again, extremely important position, and having just one is not going to be enough. There are some young players, um, but at this point in time, there's nothing that I'm overly excited about. And one good corner, as I just said, in a division with, you know, in the NFC North with Adams, with Diggs, with Thielen, with now Allen Robinson. You know, you could throw in, you know, whatever, potentially some other guys as well you're going to have to do better than one corner. So I'm giving you now your second sort of solid corner. You, I mean, you're still going to need more because you, you look at the slot. Again, Thielen, Cobbs isn't horrible. The Bears just got, uh, what, what is it, Anthony Miller in the slot. We'll see how good he is. But you got to keep going, man. If, if you don't have three solid corners, two guys on the boundary and a slot corner, you're going to get carved up in the NFL. That's just all there is to it. So, um for that reason, I'm giving the Lions Mr. Levante Taylor. With the 19th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Dallas Cowboys select Paris Campbell, wide receiver, Ohio State. So I'm assuming most people are thinking, oh, this is Des Bryant's gone. We need a new wide receiver, right? Kind of. That's kind of what I'm saying here. Um, and I'm not really sure how Cowboys fans feel about Des. I, I got the feeling... I always would have assumed that they love Des, but I'm getting the feeling that it's kind of like a good riddance kind of thing. But anyways, I just think that's kind of interesting. Let me know in the comments section, Cowboys fans. Um, and that actually was my initial thought was, okay, let's let's find ourselves a Des Bryant replacement. But you've already got Hearns and you've got Williams. Both of these guys are six foot two plus. I think one of them is six foot three, and they run in like the four or five. So you got the big body guys that are just more route runners kind of thing. You know, big go up and get it type guys. They're they're not anything special athletically. So I'm thinking, why don't we go ahead and get that guy that's kind of more of a speedster? So Campbell's six foot two oh eight. He runs he's projected to run under a four four. So um 
that'll be kind of our, our different dynamic is to get the guy that can take the top off um, in a football sense, obviously. Moving on, with the 20th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Carolina Panthers select Mac Wilson, linebacker, Alabama. So I have no doubt in my mind most uh, Panthers fans are going to hate this pick. First of all, it is a value pick. I, I've had these, there's so many linebackers too, and I never want to give a team a linebacker in the first round, but there's just so many, I have to do something with them. One of the other big reasons that these guys have fallen is because almost every single one of them is currently a Mike linebacker. They're right in the middle and everybody has a Mike linebacker and it's hard to find a team. However, I've noticed with Mac Wilson that the guy is, uh, what is he here? Of course I didn't put it down. He's a smaller, faster kind of sideline to sideline guy. So I decided, you know what, we're going to make a transition. We're going to draft this guy. We're going to move him over to weak side. He's going to play opposite or next to Luke Keekley, And that's going to be his, uh, his primary role. And, um, What's up, buddy? Slight interruption. Um, anyways, bottom line is I know Luke Keekley is holding it down. I know linebacker isn't the most important position. But you got two guys playing linebacker. I'm assuming you want two other guys to perform up to snuff, right, to be not horrible next to Luke Keekley, and I'm not sure that you have that. So I'm giving you one in Mac Wilson. You're welcome. Moving on. With the 21st pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the L.A. Chargers select Raekwon Davis, defensive line Alabama. So very similar to last year, there's defensive linemen that are higher up on the board. I can never find a spot for them. They end up falling a lot farther than they should. That is the situation with Raekwon Davis. I have him number 12 overall. I really doubt a guy that's 12 on everyone's big board is going to slide to 21, but especially in the first one, I just... I don't want some random guy to go to a team that absolutely doesn't need it, and then I get crucified and everybody unfollows my channel because they say this guy's a dummy, and you know you know how that goes. Anyways, it may not be the biggest need for the Chargers, but on top of being a good value, um, you put him on this team that has a great front. So it'll solidify that defensive line to being a, assuming this guy's good, very good defensive line inside of Bosa and Ingram dominant. So, listen, I don't know what I have to do for the Chargers for you guys to start winning football games, because on paper, I don't know. You, you you guys should be in the playoffs every single year, and you just, you can't even, what what do I have to do? What do I have to do for you guys? I don't know what I have to do. I'm, 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 I'm stacking your defensive line depth here. <sighs> I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Honestly, put it in the comments. That why are you guys so horrible? What, what is wrong with your football team? You got the quarterback, you got the wide receivers, you got the running back, you got the defense. You, what are you missing? You have terrible football teams who have not even a quarter of the talent you have on your team getting into the playoffs. Somebody's got to tell me what's going on. I don't watch you guys close enough. I just go, oh wow, holy cow, look at this team. This team is stacked with talent. Oh, they're not going to be in, okay, not going to be in the playoffs. Okay, moving on. That that really bothers me though. I don't understand because I, I'm excited for good football teams. I'm. Is it is it a coaching thing? Because it feels like a coaching thing when the talent is there and you guys can't do it. And I know you guys are injured a lot, but still, it's just come on. What is going on over there? You're an AFC team. I don't care if you're successful. Be successful. If you're an NFC team, I'd just be laughing at you. Ha ha. You can't win. But you're not. So I'm rooting for you. Come on. Buck up, will you? With the 22nd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Seattle Seahawks select Trey Adams, offensive tackle out of Washington. Now, there was recently some news that he had a really bad back injury. He could be out for the entire year, but that actually may work to our benefit, getting him to slide all the way back to the 22nd pick. At least that's going to be my rationale for now. We'll see exactly what's going to happen with that. This is, again, uh, where the Seahawks traded back to, and this is exactly why they traded back. And I understand it's getting lazy and it's getting boring going offensive line time after time. And, yes, I know you got Jamarco Jones, but if you really think Jamarco Jones is the answer to all your offensive line problems, I can't help you. And maybe we're just not going to be friends in the future because Jamarco Jones I don't think is going to be very good at anything. And I think Trey Adams is just the – first step of many that need to be taken to make your offensive line better we'll see we'll see how it goes i don't know 
But I'm thinking Jamarco Jones ain't it. So we're going with Trey Adams. Um, it is possible. It is possible that we do Trey Adams. And if Posick can take a step, maybe you got something here. Maybe you got at least enough that we can just move on and stop talking offensive line forever. In fact, why don't you guys just trade for somebody right now, get a tackle so I can never just move on and not, why did you draft a running back last year? Can I ask you that? We haven't, we haven't had a conversation since the draft. Somebody tell me why. And how's it going, by the way? How's it going over there with, uh, with your new fancy running back? Sounds like you guys are going to start Carson. How's that going? Do you? Let me ask you another question. How much do you hate Schneider? He he's a he's an old Ted Thompson guy. I remember for a while thinking, oh man, maybe we should bring back Schneider when we were looking for a new GM. I am so glad we didn't do that, and I have to assume he wasn't even on on the list of candidates. He is so bad. Does anybody like John Schneider and what he's done for that football team? You guys had that one good draft and have done absolutely nothing since then. Because there's just no talent behind that initial draft. Now those guys are all falling off, and what do you got? Why am I getting angry all of a sudden? i got to move on. Let's talk about something happy. Here's the Green Bay Packers. With the 23rd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Montez Sweat, edge rusher, Mississippi State. So I'm going to say that this guy's a relative unknown. And the only reason I say that isn't because you don't know who he is, because you probably do. But it's completely unknown as to, is he a first-round kind of pick because he's a quarterback destroyer? Or is he a fifth-round pick? Because I've heard him going as late as the fifth round. Don't really know. He racked up 10.5 sacks in 2017. We'll see how he does this year. It's obviously going to make a massive difference when there's that big of a disparity between what people think of you. Your ability to dominate in your final year before declaring for the draft is going to have a big impact. But as of right now, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm going to say the Packers take Montez Sweat. It's a good value for where I have it, and it's uh, appeasement for the Packers fans because obviously this has been something that they've been banging the table for, and they're all very sad about not getting Khalil Mack. Not me. I said it was not a good decision for us, but I would say about 98% of Packer fans were screaming we need Khalil Mack. So here you go. You get Montez Sweat. You're welcome. With the 24th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Tyler Petit, tight end, USC. Yes, it is Petit. I looked it up. That's how you say it. I was hoping it was Pettit. It's not. It's Petit. It's horrible. Sorry. Very similar pick to the 49ers. I think the Falcons are just an incredible team. And it's teams in the NFC North that are good, it's it's so horrible because... (laughs) As a Packers fan, as you know, Falcons and everybody else can attest to, it's like we got these good teams, but how do you stack up against the Saints? You got the Falcons, you got the Packers, you got the Vikings, you've got the Rams. You what half of the NFC, maybe more, is reasonably in contention for playoffs and therefore Super Bowl? It's such a horrible time to be in the NFC. So like, yay, we're stacked, but we're still like the, only the 10th best team in the NFC. Anyways, they're still a very, very good football team. They've, they've made great strides with their defense. They have a horrifically scary offense for any team that has to go up against them. They do not have an elite tight end or even necessarily a very scary tight end that anyone should be scared of. So I'm going with Tyler Petit based on where he's ranked right now. I don't think he's shown a ton in college, so I don't know exactly why he would be up this high other than he's just extremely athletic and underutilized. But um, his stats aren't anything really special. 6'3", 250, but same exact rationale, right? We're looking for that guy that gives us that mismatch, that one extra little bit to take us over the top. We just went Calvin Ridley last year, who I think is going to be a big piece. I really like Calvin Ridley. We'll see how he does this year. But obviously Julio, Ridley, we got our quarterback, we got our stacked running back group we're doing some some stuff on defense that's getting better and better and uh, I just feel like a tight end is going to put us over the edge a little bit moving on with the 25th pick in the 2019 NFL draft the Houston Texans select Dalton Risner offensive tackle Kansas State so I it shouldn't be a tough sell but I kind of think it is a somewhat of a tough sell only because 
there's a decent amount of youth along the offensive line. So there's a part of me that wonders if Texans fans are going to look at this and roll their eyes and go, this dummy doesn't realize we've got talent. They're up and coming, blah, blah, blah. The problem is we're talking about Martinez Rankin and we're talking about uh, Davenport, right? Both of these guys are like mid-round talent, I think, mid to late-ish round talent. Most of the tackles that are any good in the NFL ever, with the exception of a few like David Bakhtiari, who was like a fourth-round pick, almost all of them are going to be gone in the first two rounds. So here's my thought. Let's draft Dalton Risner. Rankin, who is currently at our, I think he's currently the right tackle, right? We're going to kick him inside because there was speculation before he was drafted. He may actually be better as a guard. So we're going to get Dalton Risner. We're going to make him the right tackle. We're going to take uh, Martinez rank and we're going to slide him inside to guard. We're going to upgrade two positions at once. And this is a team that has a lot going for him. They've got a good defense. They've got some firepower now on offense. We'll see how this quarterback does. I'm not exactly on the Deshaun Watson hype train quite yet. I think that was just a flurry that came out of nowhere, but way too small of a sample size. Anyways, though, the potential is there. If we can upgrade two spots on, along the offensive line, maybe later in the draft, right, we'll start picking up other pieces along the offense and defense. But later on, fourth, fifth round, we'll start looking at maybe a guard, maybe a center, whatever, to really just start to solidify this offensive line. Now we're really getting somewhere. Because you've got a running back, and I have no idea if this guy's any good, because you're going to run him into the ground. But at the same time, he has nowhere to go because your offensive line is so terrible. So do we need a new running back? Or do we just need a better offensive line? I have no idea. But we need to find out because we need to get a better offensive line. So we're getting Dalton Risner at offensive tackle. He's going to go right tackle. That's the situation. Moving on. With the 26th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, and I cannot tell you how extremely excited I am. We have two first-round picks. I do not want to trade. I don't want Khalil Mack. You know why? Because I like the draft. That's why I have a channel about the draft and the Packers. We have two first-round picks. (laughs) So happy. So I get to I get to do the Packers twice every week. It's going to be great. With the 26th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Green Bay Packers select Marvell Tell, safety, USC. Now, this was probably my biggest reach. He was like late second round, I think, based on my big board. But I don't really care because nothing really matched up. So it was either this or we go running back. And I'm pretty sure Packer fans would have lost it if I went with running back because everyone's real excited about Aaron Jones, whatever. Maybe I'll do running back someday. We'll gauge how it's going if Aaron Jones has a terrible year, whatever. Bottom line, though, safety is actually a pretty big need, and I didn't really see this one coming. But haha, Clinton Dix is very much up in the air, right? Two years ago, he went to the Pro Bowl. Everyone's super excited. Last year, the whole team kind of fell off. Big question of what happened to haha. It seemed like he just took the year off. Now, listen, I can forgive. I'm willing to forgive. Last year was a joke. Last year was was terrible. It was horrible. Rodgers went down. Hundley was terrible. You're not going to win. You're not getting into the playoffs. It's not okay that you took time off. But if you're telling me that you just kind of took off because you wanted to save your body because you can come back next year and dominate, and he's kind of doing it again in the preseason. But again, fine. Preseason, I don't want you to get hurt in the preseason. I don't care about the preseason. If you don't want to risk your body, your brain, your neck, lunging at somebody in the preseason... All is forgiven, but you got to step up here. Bottom line, though, is even if HaHa Clinton Dix isn't terrible, which, by the way, he's coming up in a contract year, so being as stingy as the Packers are and as willing as they are to just you know say, nope, sorry, not giving you money because you're not worth it, even if they sign him, even if he's a good football player, we still have Kentrell Bryce, who is barely good enough to be a backup in my mind. And I know... Not a popular opinion. He's a popular person in Green Bay, and we'll see how he does. I don't think he's a starter. I just don't. Packers need to get better at safety. I'm skeptical as to the importance of the safety position in today's NFL, but regardless of all of that, the fact of the matter is you got to have safeties in the NFL. I don't know if the Packers have one. We're getting Marvell Tell safety out of USC. Moving along. With the 27th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select, come on now, Anthony Johnson, wide receiver out of Buffalo. So obviously quarterback is in the back of my mind. We'll see how Blake Bortles does. I absolutely am of the opinion that the Jaguars had a Super Bowl locked up. Whether or not they were going to win it, I don't know, but they were going to be in the Super Bowl if only their quarterback could do anything but be terrible, and he absolutely blew it. They were trying to drag him into the Super Bowl, and he just refused. They didn't make it. That's my opinion. I absolutely want to upgrade that position. However, 
I'm going to wait. I'm going to hold it out. We're going to see how it goes because if he's good enough, and he just needs to be barely good enough, right? You don't need an elite quarterback to win a Super Bowl. We have learned that. I'm going to call him barely good enough. We're going to go in a different direction. I have Johnson ranked 19th on my big board, so it's a fantastic value, and I think value met need here, so I pulled the trigger. Johnson's six foot one, 207 pounds, estimated four or five time, but he put up over 1,300 yards last year in uh, in college football. So, fantastic football player, and he should be a a big need filler for this team going forward. With well, the 28th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the L.A. Rams, I don't know why I'm having such a hard time remembering where all these teams are. Vegas and L.A. and St. Louis and stop moving around so much. The Rams, who are in a city that nobody cares about them, select Tavion County, Coney, however you say his name, inside linebacker, Notre Dame. So the Rams linebacking group, linebacker group, is not very good. And, um... Maybe some people are thinking Kaiser and Scales are going to be something special. I'm thinking probably not so much, though. Um, I really think the linebacking group should be addressed. I understand nobody cares about inside linebacker. It's like drafting a center. Everyone's going to be upset with me about it, but it just it is what it is. Strangely, he actually managed 11.5... This kid's interrupting me. It's going to be the death of me. <laughs> Anyways... Coney's six foot two forty. He actually managed eleven point five sacks last year, which is kind of insane. I, I double checked the uh, roster over at Notre Dame. He is the middle linebacker. He's not an outside linebacker. Maybe they slide him outside occasionally. I'm not sure how a middle linebacker gets almost twelve sacks in a season. But either way, you've got a middle linebacker that is as talented as he is, and he gets after the quarterback the way that he does. I would not be surprised in any way if this guy can uh, end up getting drafted in the first round. And I have him going to the Rams. Moving on. <sighs> it's hard work being me. <laughs> With the 29th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Minnesota Vikings select Mitch Hyatt, offensive tackle out of Clemson. It's a little bit of a reach, but I really don't know what else to do with this team. Uh, they've, they've got a really pretty solid roster. Offensive line is still one of the bigger needs. I know you guys have made some moves. I know because you're Vikings fans, you think that you guys are the greatest in the world, and that's fantastic, and you have the best offensive line ever. But you don't. It's not that good. So I'm going to get you help whether you want it or not. Um, Yes, I understand Hyatt is kind of the lazy pick because just like Seattle and everybody else, it's just offensive line, offensive line, offensive line. Eventually, we'll go in a different direction, but it just feels like that's the only – I'm giving you a compliment. I'm looking at your roster and going, nah, you guys are pretty good everywhere. I mean, I can get you some corner help, but there's no real good corners. So the best value for the biggest need is going to be Mitch Hyatt, as it currently stands, offensive tackle out of Clemson. Six foot five, 305 pound left tackle. Who knows? I mean, maybe he can be right tackle. Maybe he could slide in a guard. I really have no idea. But he's yours now. Do what you like with him. With the 30th pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Patty Fisher, linebacker, Northwestern. I'm telling you, I'm I'm so sorry. I do not want to do linebacker, but it's literally my big board is like everybody's done, and then I've got like six linebackers that are like, what about me? I should have been picked in like number four overall. It's like, but you're a linebacker and nobody cares. I'm hoping these big boards change, but it's just as it stands. It's just linebacker, linebacker, wide receiver, wide receiver, linebacker, linebacker, wide receiver. That's all it is right now. But the fact of the matter is the Steelers could use a linebacker. They have not had a really good one since they lost Ryan Shazier. Fisher, six foot three, 245 pounds, zero sacks, but 111 total tackles in uh, 13 games last year. So he is a tackle master. With the 31st pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the New England Patriots select Debo Samuel, wide receiver out of South Carolina. I don't know if that's a thing that they do, but I just did it because I'm that way. Um, I'm not sure what the Patriots are doing. I don't know if this is like a challenge because they're just bored with the NFL these days and they're like, eh, all we do is win. Let's try something crazy. How about if we just cut every wide receiver that we have, right? We're going to give Cooks away and... Last time I checked, you guys had, what, three wide receivers, 
and then uh, w technically four, but one guy is just a special teamer, and then you just sign somebody from the Jets who's basically a nobody. So you kind of have three guys at wide receiver, n none of whom are really any good. So anyways, I'm going to get you a wide receiver. I'm going to go ahead and get you one of those guys. 5'11", 215, runs a 4'5", 40. Um, I'm not really sure what's so incredibly special about the guy, considering the measurables. He's short, he's heavy, he's slow. <laughs> he uh, caught seven passes for 56 yards in week one, and he's only played 18 games in his first three years. I'm assuming his, his rookie year he didn't play because he was a rookie. It looks like sophomore year, maybe he got injured. He played like five games or something to that effect, and then he played like 10 games two years ago. So I don't know. He must just have some incredible talent because – People are really high on Debo Samuel. He has produced nothing. He doesn't seem to be much by way of uh, um, athleticism. I haven't watched any film on him, but I'm just I'm just telling you. Some people are very excited about him because he's he's here. This is where he is. Um, so go watch some film on Debo Samuel. Let me know what's going on. Finally, with the 32nd pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Julian Love, cornerback, Notre Dame. So, Sidney Jones seems to be exactly what we all thought he was going to be, right? Sidney Jones was in a very, very talented class, thought to be maybe the best corner in the entire class. The Eagles did the intelligent thing. They drafted the guy knowing that, okay, he's going to miss the first year, but when he comes back, he's going to be a freak. And then, of course, the one year that they're like, whatever, this will be a throwaway year, they win the Super Bowl. So now they come back and it's like, hey... We get this guy. It's basically like another first-round pick is basically what they got with Sidney Jones. But he's playing really, really well. Um, but again, in 2018, 2019, having a pile of good corners is not the worst thing. So Love, Jones, and Darby are your starting corners. You're welcome. So anyways, folks, that is it. That is the first ever 2019 NFL draft. It was a little bit rocky. Had a couple interruptions with the cheering. I'm going to try to uh, edit that out. And, of course, the draft order and Raiders having two, Bears having none, all that stuff. Little kinks are going to get worked out. We're going to work through this. But, again, get involved in the Facebook group. And um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm going to get to work on the next mock draft for next week. I'm also going to be doing... Um, hopefully starting tomorrow, we're going to be doing seven round mock drafts for each team every single day. If I can, it's probably unrealistic that I can do every day, but I'm going to try because there's 32 teams. So if I do it every day, I'm doing like one a month. So that is my goal. We'll see what happens. You folks have yourselves a fantastic day. I'll talk to you hopefully tomorrow. Bye-bye.